Hello and welcome to the Wooly Ram Leads. My name is Nicole and this is a video podcast where I typically come and share my current works in progress and finished objects related to my love of fiber crafting. Um, I primarily talk about knitting and spinning on here, but I also talk about any other fiber crafts that I might dabble in as well. But that's not what we're doing today. Today we're doing something a little bit different as it is a new year and a lot of times it is fun to take a look back at the previous year and see what we completed in the year. So that's what we're doing today. So today's episode is a roundup of everything I finished in 2023. I'm only talking about knitting in this episode. Um, I only did one uh, finished skein of yarn and so I talked about that in the last formal episode so I'm not going to worry about bringing it forward here and at that point I didn't even have it skeined up it's still not skeined up and I still have more yarn to spin so it's a halfway finished object so we're not going to count it um so yeah this is everything I have finished in 2023 so I hope you enjoy this episode and let's get started. I'm going to go in order of when I finish things rather than by category of what the object is. We're just going to go from January of last year to December of this year. So let's get started. All right, so here's my stack and we're going to start off with some hats. So at the beginning of last year, I was kind of getting back into knitting. I hadn't been knitting for a while since the birth of my daughter. And one of the first things that I finished was this hat for my son. This is a really fun and unique hat. This is the Torsion hat by the Woolly Wormhead. And it is a beanie type hat with the crown of the hat being constructed in a five star um, structure. <laughs> see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is has five points like a star and it is knit in Bumblebee Acre Farms, their squishy DK base, um, and the colorway is called the Ride Through the Highlands or A Ride Through the Highlands. It is an Outlander inspired uh, colorway that I picked up in Wisconsin back in 2019 at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. And it is a superwash base. I can't remember, I can't remember if it's um, BFL or if it was Merino um, or the fiber content on that. I forgot to look that up before I started filming. But yeah, here it is. You can kind of see the colorway twists around. Um, so I don't know if that counts as pooling, but I don't mind. I think it's fun. This for my son, I knit this in the largest size. This is a kid's pattern, um, but I'm sure you could knit it because this one turned out actually pretty large. I knit the largest size. I don't remember what the head circumference was, but my son has a really large head. So I thought I just automatically said, let's do the largest size. You're close enough to it anyways. But I forgot about the fact that super wash yarn has a tendency to become really stretchy and draped. Um, and so it is absolutely huge on him. I will probably not have to knit him a hat for at least five years. <laughs> um, I can wear this hat. So, I might never have to knit him a hat again until this thing falls apart, <laughs> or he gets sick of it. So that is my first finished object that I completed in January of 2023. <laughs> the second pattern I finished is another hat, also by the Woolly Worm Head, and this is, I believe, the Floralese, and yes, it looks just like a square. <laughs> this is actually a pattern that is in... Um, both of these patterns are out of uh, the Woolly Worm Heads hat book. I don't know, I think she only has one book out right now, but maybe she has others. But my local library had um, this book, and so I knit the, both of these patterns from that. So the torsion hat is from the children's section of her book, and this hat is actually in, I think, the women's section of the book. And with my ring camera, I can't tell if you can see how well you can see the cable. It looks really washed. Oh, there we go. That's better. Um, so, yes, you can see it has a cable. Both sides have a cable um, on the opposite side. It is um, 
knit, I'm trying to remember how I knit this. It's knit in a tube. So it's knit in a tube, just as is. No shaping, nothing. It's just the cables. There's also these. Focus. Um, bobbles. My bobbles did not turn out at all, and I don't know what I did wrong. I've done bobbles on other projects before. These ones just did not turn out. I wish I had just left them off and it just been a cable because you can't even see them and it just looks like these funny kind of blobs. So I don't know what I did wrong with that. Um, but I knit this for my daughter. So this is the Flora Lees by Wooly Wormhead. And I think I knit the size two. It is, like I said, no shaping involved. You're just, you've got your cables and you just knit um, in this tube and then you just sew it together. Um, I think I did the Kitchener stitch to close the top and I remember I did not like how it turned out um, because when you do the Kitchener, it creates like a stockinette stitch and most of this is garter and I don't think it flows very nice, but it's not super noticeable, so I don't mind. It is super cute on a child because it kind of sits like this uh, when you wear it. Uh, she wore it for the first time this winter and it is just super cute. This yarn is Crabtree Farms, a local farm in our area that raises merino sheep. So this is merino wool and it is a DK weight. It was a white yarn that I dyed myself this yellow because I kind of have a yellow theme going for my daughter. And I'm hoping at some point to knit mittens and maybe either a cowl um, or a scarf for her that matches because this is still a little big on her and I know um, as long as she doesn't grow like crazy in the next year that we should be able to get at least one more winter's wear out of this and it would be fun to have a whole matching set. So that is this one really love this pattern and I really love this yarn. This is a favorite yarn of mine. I knit my frozen silver shawl several many years ago in this in the white um, natural base and I absolutely love it. It is so soft. And the next pattern that I finished again I believe I filmed I think I finished this either in February or March of 2023 and I'm so glad I went back through my old podcast to make sure I didn't miss any patterns because I would have missed this one and this one is such a beautiful pattern I love this this is the Mia Pinafore by Scandi Knits it is a um, originally uh, a Scandinavian design so I believe it's originally written in Norwegian um, but it is available in English. There, I believe there were maybe a few funny um, things in the pattern that I had to go and translate to make sure I was doing it right, but I can't remember, do not quote me on that, um, that it was like lost in translation because of that English was not how it was written. So it's this very sweet little lace pinafore dress with um, these ruffled sleeves. I modified the sleeves to add more extreme ruffles. I did not feel like the pattern, how it was originally written, had enough ruffle, and I wanted a lot of ruffles, so I did. Um, I forgot to increase the um, my needle size on the lace panel on the front, but I think it turned out okay. It worked, fit my daughter really well. She wore this for her one-year pictures, so these, I believe is a one year size and here it is it's got a folded hem I, this is really washed out and I'm really sorry that you can't see the color the way it is and maybe not the detail as well um, and then it has adjustable straps in the back um, when I have not tried this on to see if it still fits her it might still fit her but you can adjust the straps. The pattern gives you room for one, two, three, four, five, six buttonholes. And right now I have it on the third shortest. Um, you can wear it like this, where the straps just go straight up and down. And 
or you can wear it how I had her wear it when she first wore it as a crisscross in the back that'll make it a little bit tighter if your child is a little bit too small for um, the pattern absolutely love this pattern uh, the lace did give me a little bit of a sore wrist but um, I was also trying to knit this really fast uh, Scandi Knits has a lot of other cute little pinafore dresses like this as well as other really cute baby wear um, and I believe she even has patterns that are for um, dollies so that you can have your child and their dolly match um, the yarn is uh, from the Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. This is the her 100% Dorset base that she did some years ago, and this is dyed with indigo. And this was um, indigo three is what this was. And um, yeah, so here is this the sweetest little dress. I love this dress so much, and I'm so glad I did not forget it to have it in this lineup had to share with you today. Oh, and I'm dropping pieces. Let's go save that. The Runaway Project here is my cable trellis pillow. I knit this, again, I think it was in February I was working on it. I can't remember when I finished it. Um, but this is a pillow that I intended to have on my couch and I have yet to uh, knit its matching uh, friend. <laughs> so it is a lone pillow and my children like to run off with it anyways and use it in forts and such anyways. So it does get a lot of love and is pilling a little bit, but that's okay, I knew it would. Um, that it's not a big deal to me. This is knit in our own farm yarn. This is our Rex Lamb. I have it listed as a DK, but it's really like a light worsted, heavy DK, somewhere in between. It really bloomed after it was spun. So its fiber weight is actually a DK weight, but its um, diameter is more of a worsted. So it is um, wood, the wood smoke pattern, or wood smoke, <laughs> excuse me. It is out of the wood smoke um, book by Nitpicks, I believe, and it is designed by Emily Kingtig. And so it is a all-over cable on the front, and then the back is just stockinette stitch, um, so you don't have to cable the whole thing. And let me see if I can get a better view of the actual pattern. So I hope you can see that. Um, and yeah, it's really pretty simple once um, you get going, you kind of memorize the cable and it's not um, super complicated to knit. So I really need to get around to knitting its pair so that my couch is not lopsided when I put this on my couch and when it stays on my couch, which doesn't happen very often. I just got a cheapo Walmart pillow form in it right now and I probably want to change that out because it's really thin and I think it would be a lot nicer if it was a little bit fluffier and it has plenty of room to be fluffier. Um, some people did some pretty fun things where they added zippers or buttons. I didn't do any of those things um, so if I want to change out the pillow form I am going to have to unstitch my sewing and maybe at that point I would like to add in a zipper so that I can uh, change out the inside of the pillow and refluff it as needed. Um, but yeah, so there is this one. Here it is. Super cozy. Now we get to my big garment finish object of the year. And that is my Zweig sweater by Caitlin Hunter. This guy deserves all the love. It took me a long time to finish it. It had no reason to take me so long to finish it because it was actually quite an easy pattern, um, but I did a lot of ripping out and redoing it, And but I love it. I have worn it many times. Um, it is knit in Teal Torch Knits um, DK yarn. I think, where was it? Fingering. 
don't remember. But the colorways are High Queen Margot and Dangerously Happy. Um, the blocking of it has definitely helped with the puckering the issue that I was having on um, the neckline. I think it has something to do with my short row shaping and it's still there a little bit but it's not as bad since I blocked it. Now I did have an oops when I blocked it that I'm a little bit bummed about. I don't think you can see it on camera. You might be able to tell if you look at past pictures in the episode where I talked about this sweater but it um, I did not think to wash my yarn before I knitted it together. So when I went to block this, the purple bled into the white. And so now my white section here is slightly more pinky tinged rather than being a white with speckles. And it might have done that anyways. Um, if I had washed all of this individually, the white yarn might have done, bled a little bit from the speckles and caused it to do this anyways. I don't know. but. Just a reminder that if you're knitting with really high contrasts, such as a white and a really dark color like this, wash your yarn, soak your yarn before you knit, just in case that it has some bleeding. Um, because yeah, I was a little bit disappointed when I discovered that happened. Um, so, kind of hope that maybe I do need to wash this again because I spilled some stuff on this. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe you know after a couple washes maybe it'll brighten up a little bit but it might not because since this is a super wash yarn super wash takes dye really easily that is one of the reasons dyers like super wash so much is because it takes the color so well and so it might be just have taken the dye in its bath um, anyways so there might be nothing to do about that but I still love the sweater super comfy I like how it fits it fits well um, I did not need to, I did modify the sleeves to be a little bit longer by an inch didn't need to do that but that's okay it's a little bit more bunchy on the sleeves with which I think works with these long um, ribbed cuffs um, one thing issue I'm having which I'm sure you can see these random little strings is that when I wove in the ends I had a heck of a time with weaving in my ends that they seem to keep wanting to pop out and I don't typically have this issue so I'm thinking it's a super wash thing I don't know but it constantly is popping out and I'm having to tuck it back in or re-sew it in I had a lot of issues when I sewed it in where I would go through the fabric and um, it would be on the other side you could see the strand because it was just so easy for me to poke it through the fabric and I didn't even notice until afterwards and I'd have to rip it back. So I'm assuming that's a super wash thing. I've never experienced that before, um, but I've never done a full garment in super wash before. But I absolutely love my swag. I'm so excited to knit more sweaters for myself. I would love to have a whole wardrobe that all I wore is sweaters all winter long and all fall long. So maybe someday I can aspire to that. Finally, we're moving into my last two knits of the year, and you have, if you have seen my most recent podcast, you've seen one of these items, the other item I talked about but didn't have handy. So the first item I'm going to show you is my husband's World War II inspired gloves by Andrew Rao. I didn't really explain too well about the World War II inspired um, part of the pattern but anyways these were um, designed based off of the what was the issued gloves to World War II servicemen and so that's part of why I picked them because it seemed so logical that something designed based off of gloves that would have been issued to servicemen that would have been meant for heavy use would be a great one for my husband who wanted these to be hard wearing so here they are, I guess maybe I'll show you just one. I will put it on. My hands are very small, so, um, so you can see my hands are really small, so these are kind of like overwhelm my fingers a little bit. Um, I did, like I said in last episode, I did have to rip back some rows on the fingers on I think it was the pinky finger and I can't remember maybe it was the 
middle finger here um, and then I also felted this a lot I probably ran this through both my washer and dryer four times because it was just so large um, that it was so roomy like I said there's probably a man out there that would have fit <laughs> what I created but um, he would be someone who had a very large hand and yeah these they were huge <laughs> like my fingers were barely peeking over the top um, and this was a one-size-fits-all pattern so there wasn't room for me to do a different size I didn't do gauge maybe I should have maybe the gauge was my fault but um, I then also knit my son the little mittens um, in the same yarn and didn't have a problem with that so I don't know what the deal was with that so here you can see it more close up uh, I'll focus and it's kind of washed out I'm using my ring light and it's not going to focus no one wants to see the bookshelf I want to see the glove there we go <laughs> so there it is it's just a typical kind of fingerless glove with each of the fingers being individual pieces rather than just an open um, glove uh, my husband is decided debating if he wants me to go ahead and make this a full fingered glove instead because he found that with how thick the fabric is which might be partly because of both the yarn being a worsted weight and the felting process that it's a little bit thick and he doesn't feel like he has the dexterity to really work in these the way he had wanted so I might need to make him a DK uh, version of this style of um, glove I don't think I will probably use this pattern for that um, just because my gauge was so all over the place um, but it might be fine if I use a smaller yarn huh I don't know but yeah so these are the World War II inspired gloves the final finished object of 2023 is the world's simplest mittens by tin can knits and this is the child size um, that I knit for my son that I knit in a 24 hour period um, I didn't knit straight in case you're wondering but this was completed in 24 hours so I don't know maybe it took me more like 12 hours in actual knitting time this is again our farm yarn this is also the I don't think I mentioned the far what yarn this was this is our farm yarn on the uh, gloves um, so this is covered bridge farm flock blend worsted weight and this is the colorway that I have dyed called Emerald City and this is also the same yarn on the main part of the hand of the mitten so this is kind of fun you can see the non felted fabric versus the felted fabric so um, so these are the gloves for my son like I said main color is our farm yarn and then the blue is youthful fibers um, worsted Jacob yarn that was dyed in a blue and um, it was a mini scheme that I had my mom put together a Christmas um, advent calendar on her own um, back in 2018 and it was so much fun um, and I still have a lot of these mini skeins to be working through um, they're a little bit large for him it is the child size I was kind of nervous to do the toddler size and it not fit him but these will be able to last him for a couple years so yeah here they are pretty cute. Um, the original pattern did not have the striped color so you can knit this completely solid. You could do stripes all over. You could do add a um, color work like um, motif on it if you wanted to. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility with this pattern. This is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. I love Tin Can Knits patterns. So um, I have nothing but good things to say about this pattern so if you're looking for an easy mitten pattern definitely check this out so with that that wraps up everything I knit in 2023 which is not a crazy amount um, I did take some knitting breaks um, I've had some issues going on with my hand hurting and it's not related directly related to knitting anyways so I've been a little bit um, taking a lot of breaks because of that but 
so that was seven items I think that I finished in the end which is pretty good I think for me uh -huh. and I hope you enjoyed watching this with me and looking back at the year I do hope to film one more special episode um, being what I would like to make in 2024 so I hope you will join me for that when it, once that is out um, and I will see you next time bye mm -hmm.